Hey guys, it's time for another reading vlog. Okay, so where I left off in the last one, I had 50 pages left to go of The Beast Player. I have now finished this. Five stars, absolutely love it. Please watch out for the review. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a book diary because I've already done one, but I'm going to put like a review at the beginning. So if you don't want to watch the vlog, which has no spoilers anyway, I made it no spoilers specifically. But if you don't want to watch that, you can watch the first like few minutes, which will tell you why you should read this book because it was just so good. Like I've said thousands of times, Studio Ghibli style. It's heartbreaking in places and it just really shows the strength and the journey of a young woman. It also shows how as much as we love animals, some of them are best left not interfered with by humans at all, which is a hard pill for me to swallow because if it was up to me, I would live in like a jungle with pet wolves and cheetahs and like, I don't know, a bear. So I love animals, but it also teaches an important lesson of why you shouldn't interfere with them. Absolutely love this, would highly recommend, definitely made my 2018 favourites list. I'm going to email the publisher and see if they have any plans to release a sequel. Also, one of the reasons I feel like I've heard nothing about this is that it is only released in the US in March next year. So if you want to wait for that, then you can, but it's available on Book Depository if you want this pretty UK cover, which is it's beautiful right i finished that as you know i was also reading acceptance by jeff vandermeer and i'm still reading that i'm on page 120 now so i've read 80 pages since i last updated you really liking that because i'm loving all of the new perspectives that we're getting especially like the lighthouse keeper that one is so interesting it follows different timelines it sort of follows before area x became area x so i'm guessing that's going to tell me why and how it became area x it follows before the first book starts, so like just before, and the present day where the books are up to so far. So I'm loving that. Can't wait to finish and find out what the hell has been happening for three books. I've also literally just this second started The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This is my new like nighttime hometime book because I finished The Beast Player. I've read one chapter of this. I'm literally only on page seven, but I'm already shocked because <laughs> This is about a woman whose grandmother wrote a book of fairy tales, became really famous but also reclusive and started to live in the Hazelwood, or I think her estate's called the Hazelwood, but it's like really secluded in this forest. Her mother seems to have run away from her grandmother to start a new life that's separate from her, and the main character has never met her grandmother. I believe at some point the girl's mother goes missing, so she has to go to the Hazelwood estate to find her. However, from that premise, and it being about fairy tales, I assumed it was a traditional style fantasy, like um, set in the, like, you know, like the normal setting of a fantasy, like medieval times or whatever the usual time frame of her fantasy is. But this is an urban fantasy. This is a girl who travels around on highways and stuff. They have a car. She was kidnapped once, discovered all this in seven pages. And I'm so shocked, but I'm so intrigued. Like I said, only on page seven. Not sure if I'm reading too much more of it today. I'm excited to continue because now, everything I thought I knew about this has been turned on its head and I have no idea what's going to happen. There will also be a book diary for this, just a normal one because it's hyped enough that I don't feel like I need to avoid spoilers. So watch out for that in the probably week after you'll see this. But that is all I have for now. I forgot to tell you what day it was. It's Monday night so look how good I'm getting. I spent a lot of last night and today catching up on other people's weekly reading vlogs but normally I watch them to find out about the booktubers lives because that's the purpose of a reading vlog but this time I was watching them to figure out how to make my reading vlogs better so I feel like this week I'm gonna have a much better time and also like I've just watched and literally just published last week's reading vlog and I don't think it's as bad as I thought it was when I was filming it but that's because I was like in a weird headspace and working on like multiple vlogs at once and it was driving me crazy because I didn't know what I was talking about and which vlog I'd mentioned stuff in <laughs> which is why I was so confused but anyway, this is a super long intro and I will catch up with you on another day this week because I discovered from watching Murphy's vlogs that you don't have to update every day. That's perfectly fine. Excuse me, that every year you prepare a terrible meal and every year I criticize it. Do our traditions mean nothing to you? So I have a couple of things to update you on. It's now Thursday. The first one is that I got a reply from Pushkin Press about a sequel to The Beast Player which I finished the weekend, I finished it on Sunday and I really really loved it but I, um, but as much research as I could do I couldn't find anything about a sequel. They 
responded and said that there will be a sequel. It's currently in translation and is due to be published in early 2020. I'm not sure about the US because the first book has only been released in 2019, but I'm so happy that we're actually going to get a sequel because I was like so worried that would, it would just go nowhere and it would be done. I've also just pretty much this minute finished uh, Acceptance, which is the last book in the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. It follows a lot of different perspectives, as I think I've already mentioned, but it still didn't answer everything. There's a lot of vagueness about it, which is intentional. There's also a lot of plays on language in it and semiotics and meanings. You do get an answer to what started everything, but it's still very much open to interpretation, which is normally something that I hate. It's the reason that I don't generally like magical realism, but I feel like I already knew that this kind of ending was going to be coming from the first book because of just generally the vagueness of everything. So four stars, I enjoyed my time reading it. I enjoyed all the different perspectives because it gave insight into different aspects. And as I said before, different timelines throughout the whole Forgotten Coast Area X thing. As for the Hazelwood, I'm only about 50 pages in. I've really been slacking on reading that one. However, that is now my priority book. I'm going to try and stop deviating from my Newt's TBR. Acceptance as of yet does not fulfill a challenge for the Newt's, but I'll see at the end of the month if I can squeeze it in somewhere. And yeah, I'm gonna continue with the Hazelwood, which is for the challenge to read a book with a color in the title for potions. But that's all I've got for you right now and I will talk to you guys later. Hi guys, so this is just a really quick update. I've just finished my gym class on Friday evening, but my bestest in real life, like my in real life best friend of like eight years has just started a booktube channel. He is funny, he's sassy. <laughs> He's done the booktube newbie tech so far. By the time you see this, he may have uploaded something else. I don't know, but he's just like, I'm so proud. I've been begging him to get booktube for months because he'll do really well on it. And he's made a channel and he posted his first video and I'm so excited. So I will link him up here and down in the description box for you to check him out. If you do, please let me know what you think. I'm just, I'm so excited. Like you have no idea how excited I am. He reads a lot of contemporary. He reads some fantasy. And like I said, he's sassy. I think if Read With Cindy and Common Spence had a baby and it was English, that's my best friend. So you should go check him out and show him all sorts of love, but don't, don't love him as much as me. Love me more. Happy Sunday guys. If I sound a bit strange, I'm having like allergy problems right now. Last night I finished The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I understand why people don't like it when they get halfway through. It does change a lot. Like you start surprisingly in this like urban fantasy contemporary setting. So it's set in New York and weird stuff happens and there's creepy people. I would say that the atmosphere of it is very creepy and I really like that. And then you get to the middle and there's this whole sequence that's kind of like The Shining where Jack's going through the hotel and every time he opens a door something weird's going on like it's very much that vibe and then it turns into like a full-blown fairy tale so it's it's strange but I did like it I'm gonna give it four stars I absolutely love Melissa Albert's writing I'm still a little bit like what the fuck after finishing this because I don't really have a concrete way of feeling about it like I it wasn't what I expected going into it to start off with because I was expecting more of like a straight fantasy and then it turned out to be more urban fantasy so straight from opening the first page of this book, it was not what I expected. So I didn't really have any preconceptions going into it about what it would be because it shocked me straight from the first page. And after that, I was just along for the ride. So I can't say if I would have liked it more if it had carried on how it was. I can't say if I'd have liked it more if it, the book was actually what I thought it was gonna be. But I really liked the creepy surrealist sort of atmosphere. Like I said, very much The Shining, very much a Tim Burton film, like Coraline, Alice in Wonderland, like, I don't know. It's very particular, so I'm not sure if I would recommend it, but I liked it and I'm giving it four stars. I have now, you can all get excited, started The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm 30 pages in. I'm on like chapter four. And so far all I can say about it is the writing style is pretty much as I expected it to be, like a adult chiclet-y type of style. I like Evelyn, we've only just met her, but I like her. We haven't started actually telling the story of Evelyn Hugo's life yet, so I don't have much to say on that, but that is my reading update for Sunday, and it's not Sunday morning, I slept in, Sunday early afternoon. So it's Sunday evening now, so I'm just gonna wrap this up. 
So this week I have finished The His Award by Melissa Alba as you saw. I also finished Acceptance by Jeff Vandermeer and started The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because this is like, well, it's not supposed to be a neutral readathon vlog, but that's like the reason that I'm vlogging. So I thought I would just do a rundown of what challenges I've completed so far. So here I have my spread in my bullet journal. And so for Care of Magical Creatures, I'm currently on Exceeding Expectations. I read The Beast Player for the first challenge to read an animal on the cover and Rat Queens Volume 1 to read a book under 100 pages. For Potions, I'm also on Exceeding Expectations. For a book with a colour in the title, I read The Hazelwood. And for a book with a male main character, I read This Girl by Colleen Hoover. For Transfiguration, I still haven't completed the Acceptable challenge but I have done exceeding expectations I'm about to fill in acceptable soon and I've got to mention that Evelyn Hugo will be for a book over 350 pages which will be outstanding for potions. Arithmancy once again I haven't filled in the acceptable which would be Hero at the Fall but I have done exceeding expectations which is ends on an even page and for that I read The Giver by Lewis Lowry and then I've also done a book with a green cover for Herbology which I read Authority for. So I'm doing pretty well. My priorities for next week are going to be to read the book with a grey cover for Transfiguration, which is Empire of Storms. Obviously finish The Seven Husbands of, of Evelyn Hugo. And also read Here at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton for the first book in Arithmancy. And then we'll see where I go from there. I doubt I'm going to read all of those because my reading has slowed down quite a bit recently. Which is annoying because I'm doing a read film, but I'm not mad about it because I have been reading absolutely loads. So that is it for this week's vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's definitely been a more talkative one than last week and I'll see you in a week in this terms of this vlog type thing. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.